I know it seems crazy to say, but training camp is already starting later this month. The Golden State Warriors, however, are looking absolutely stacked heading into the new NBA season. I'll go over that in my next video. But for now, let's evaluate who might get the last Warriors roster spot in hopes of helping to revive one of the greatest dynasties in NBA history. Before I get into this video, however, it turns out that 99% of you watching my videos aren't even subscribed to the channel. So if you want to see more Golden State Warriors content, I would consider subscribing and leaving a like on the video. Without further ado, let's get into it. So the Warriors have 14 out of 15 roster spots filled. And to be honest, that could really go to anybody. That could even go to somebody that played on their summer league roster like Kyle Guy. But you know, there's only so many more free agents left and there's still certain things that the Warriors might need for their roster overall. Now, honestly, they're pretty stacked in every position for the most part. I'd say they're guards, like I'd say shooting guards and wings, you know, twos, threes, and fours. Those positions are pretty stacked. But you know, I think the point guard and center areas are kind of where they're lacking a little bit. Um, they obviously got Chris Chios on a two-way, and they do have Gary Payton to back up Steph, but most likely Jordan Poole will be taking more of those minutes. So, based on the free agents available, I made a list of who they could possibly get on a veteran's minimum and who might want to come play for them. Now, I don't know if these guys begin minutes necessarily because they're already so deep. Um, so, let's just get into this and let's see who's available. So the first free agent I have is Paul Millsap. Um, he's obviously, you know, played the last like four seasons on the Nuggets. He's been a solid uh, backup big, at least last season. Um, he did start for them the previous seasons. I mean, he'd be, just be somebody good, just a veteran, you know, another veteran to have on the team uh, to bring leadership and mentorship, you know, besides like Iguodala, uh, so to speak. So he'd be definitely a good option at the backup spot. But, they are, you know, we already have Looney and Wiseman, but he's always a good kind of insurance in case one of them gets hurt. Um, the next guy I have is Frank Nilakina. He's um, obviously coming off a season of the Knicks where he didn't really play. He actually did have an underrated year as far as he improved his three-point shot a lot, but he didn't really get playing time in the Olympics, so it was really hard to kind of evaluate him. But he just might be good as some... I mean, he's kind of like Gary Payne in some sense because you can bring him in for defense. That's pretty much what he's going to provide. Um, not much else. Uh, maybe a little bit of playmaking, I guess three-point shooting, but we'll have to see. Um, the next guy is J.J. Redick. Um, he obviously had a little bit of an underwhelming season. Um, he had been shooting the ball great and had been having some of his best seasons in his mid-30s, but he's now 37. And, you know, I don't know if he'd be looking to come to the Warriors that are already really stacked in the guard spot, but he'd just be another veteran, another kind of floor spacer next to Steph. Next guy I have is Avery Bradley. Um, he was in the Rockets last year and on the Heat for a little bit. Um, he's solid overall, but he's kind of regressed the past couple years. Um, he didn't play in the bubble because of family issues. Um, but, um, you know, I don't know if <laughs> he could play in some of the Warriors, um, but he'd just be another veteran, another guy that's, you know, trying to win a championship because technically the one that he got with the Lakers kind of didn't count because he wasn't in the bubble, but nonetheless, he kind of still got a ring. Uh, the next guy is Jordan Bell. He was obviously on the team to end off the season. I mean, he played for the Hawks in the summer league. I don't think the Warriors are going to re-sign him, but he's just always an option as a backup big and somebody that knows the system well. And we also have Mike James. This is one I didn't even really think about, but he'd be a good backup at the point guard spot. Um, he obviously played for the Nets last year. He's got some NBA opportunities. He's just been kind of inefficient um, as far as shooting the ball, but he is a good scorer though overall and just a good veteran who's been around. And then the last guy I have is DeMarcus Cousins. You probably saw him in my thumbnail, but you know, he played solid for the Warriors for the most part when he was here. Um, he obviously was not going to get the number one option role like he did on previous teams. But he just be somebody, you know, like I said, that also knows the system like Jordan Bell and somebody that is chasing a championship. Um, it would just be a good redemption story for him, too, because he might get playing time if, you know, if maybe Wiseman or Looney gets hurt. Um, he might get those backup big minutes. So there are some guys that I think um, that the Warriors could sign for training camp. But let me know what you guys think in the comments who the Warriors might sign. But they're looking pretty stacked heading the training camp. And like I said, I'll cover that in the next video. So hope you guys did enjoy this little breakdown and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out.